Today, we are happy to host Dr. Gokarna Sharma from the Computer Science Department at Kent State University. Dr. Gokarna Sharma is currently an Associate Professor in the Department of Computer Science at Kent State University and is the Director of Scalable Computer Architecture and Emerging Technologies Laboratory, also known as SCALE. Before joining Kent State, he was a postdoctoral researcher in the University of in the Louis, in Louisiana State University in the Computer Science and Engineering Division, where he also received his PhD in Computer Science. He also completed a dual degree in European Master of Science program in Computer Sciences from the Free University of Bozen Bolzano, Italy, and Vienna University of Technology, Austria, and has done his bachelor's degree in Computer Engineering from Tribhuvan University, Nepal. Being the bright and talented man that he is, Dr. Sharma has also worked at the world-famous Alcatel-Lucent Bell Labs in the summer of 2008. Recently, in 2021, he has also received the U.S. National Science Foundation Career Award. Welcome to the show, sir, and let me take this opportunity to congratulate you for your award. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us today. Computer sciences is a field that has enormous scope in the coming time, and we feel it would be great to let everyone know about what Kent State University has to offer for interested young students. So on that note, I'd like to get directly into the questions with you. And my first is the most basic one. Can you tell us about the different programs and specializations that are offered by the computer science department at Kent State University? And how can a student choose a specialization as per their interest or aptitude? Thank you so much for the introduction. You know, uh, thank you for, uh, you know, giving my bio. It's my pleasure to be here and talk about some of the programs, um, you know, we offer at Kent State University Computer Science Department. Uh, we have a broad range of uh, programs. Uh, for example, we have MS programs, we have MA programs. Uh, today, let's focus more on MS. So within MS, we have um, regular programs. For example, you can just take regular courses on the complete your degree or you could focus on some concentrations. So for example, you might just not want to have MS degree in computer science. You might want to have some focus. For example, one focus will be computer security, right? So you want to focus on security courses more, um, not uh, not the, uh, you know, like a very fundamental basic courses in computer science. Other one is uh, computational data science. So data science is a big thing. So we have that concentration. We have computer engineering concentration. You want to focus on computer engineering aspect. Um, and then if you want to go regular, then we have uh, very basic uh, fundamental uh, uh, categories. For example, software and application. Okay, you focus more on software and then application of computer science in society. Uh, for example, how you uh, do something, uh, uh, some problem related to computer science and solve it. For example, uh, Internet of Things. One application is that. And then in Internet of Things, what you do is that you need to have, uh, you know, IP protocol aspect there, how you do communication, how you manage energy, how you deal with the limited battery power and all that. And similarly, you want to go on theory and algorithm. So all these applications, software that you talk about, that you talk about security and everything that depend on algorithms. So you could go and then design those algorithms to be able to solve some fundamental problems as well. Okay, so these are the basic ones. And then we have new degrees, you know, so so far, I talked about the, you know, our fundamental uh, MS in computer science. We have new degrees. For example, MS in artificial intelligence. Okay, that is a new degree we have. Similarly, we have MS in data science. So in MS in data science and MS in artificial intelligence, you focus more on artificial intelligence aspect or the data science aspect. So uh, you could pick uh, these different streams of, uh, um, you know, MS degrees that we offer. And then you might say, okay, do I need to uh, choose what path that I'm going to take when I join Kent State, right? You do not need to take that path when you join Kent State, okay? You can enroll in MS in computer science. You do not need to pick your concentration. Uh, the, you do not need to do anything. When you come here, then you will have an academic advisor and then you can consult with your academic advisor to choose the plan of work, what you are going to do, what is your interest. And then 
what you want to focus on um, and then uh, and then we will guide you from here okay so then what would the admission criteria be for students who do not come from a programming background and are interested to pursue computer science as a subject for example if a student wishes to make a change from electrical engineering to computer sciences then how would they go about this process and for those students who need to cover deficient courses to catch up to the requirements of computer science would the duration of the course increase as there are additional credits involved so uh, typically uh, if you enroll in ms in computer science you have to finish 32 credit hours okay so two credit hours is master's seminar so what we do is that we expose a little bit uh, you know into research so how do you do research when you do research or when you read research papers how you read how you critic the papers how what you, how you dissect it right so that is ms seminar so in seminar overall how research is done uh, what does it mean by going beyond something that is already there and then finding something new we talk about that 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 is two credit hours and then we have remaining 30 credit hours. In 30 credit hours, you depend on whether you want to go thesis option or non-thesis option. Okay, so you have that path. So when you go in thesis option, then you have some credit hours related to thesis and research. If you do not want to go through the thesis option, then you go with non-thesis. For example, you'll do a capstone project or you can go do internship somewhere and then you can count that as, a, as your credit hours. Um, so typically how it works, first semester, you will take a master's seminar that is two credit hours and two classes, six credit hours. Okay, so total eight credit hours. In second semester, you do three classes, so that means nine credit hours. Third semester, three uh, classes, that means nine credit hours. Fourth semester, you do two courses, plus either you do thesis defense or the project presentation, depending on uh, the option that you pick, right? So now, in terms of deficiency, what happens is that if you have one or two deficiencies, then somehow you could manage. For example, first semester, you take two classes. Second semester, oh, I want to go take four classes, okay? Although it would be a little bit too much load, but you could manage. Or, or you can say that, oh, I have in fourth semester, I have just two classes. Maybe I will do three classes and then project presentation because at that time, I'll be more exposed to the environment at Kent State. I know how things are done here and all that. And then so you could manage. And then... Sometimes you could accommodate something in summer as well. Okay, so these deficiency courses are somehow offered in summer as well. If if there is a uh, you know enough quorum, so you could manage that as well. But the problem is that if you have more than two deficiencies, then you have a problem. That is, uh, you know, uh, you might need one extra semester. Okay, so that one extra semester is either summer, or you have to go one more semester fall or spring. Right. And then that somehow uh, is problematic because uh, what happens is that sometimes you have deficiency courses. These courses are um, the courses that you take before you take these required courses. And then to take those courses, you have to wait for these required courses to be offered, right? So there will be a scheduling problem. And then you might not be able to take those courses at the same time. And you have to wait that course to be offered. So there will be a little bit technical problem. But what I the, the positive news is that most of the master's students that we have here, they were enrolled before and graduated. They somehow managed into two years. Okay. Some of them even finished the degree in one and a half. You know, they were like, oh, we really want to do it. Uh, you know, instead of three classes, we take four classes. You know, they are required to me. And then they finish in, uh, you know, one and a half years too. So uh, that is uh, uh, one, uh, you know, uh, one plan that that you could have, but 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 when you join Kent State, you can talk to academic advisor, and then and then you um, you uh, you plan on how are you going to uh, see when are you going to finish your degree, how am how are you going to approach it, whether you are going to take three courses or four courses or even two courses, and sometime when you do thesis you know, the, the uh, you know, research may not work as expected, and then you might need a little bit more time, but there will be summer, you will have two summers there, okay, and then at that time you can catch up. Okay, so what is the computer science department like at Kent State? Um, can you tell us a little bit about the lab facilities that are there in place and the current research prospects in the department? 
it is not a very big department. We have 15, around 15 full-time faculty. They involve in teaching and research. Um, so, uh, you know, for those faculty, research is the integral part, not just teaching. Okay. And then similarly, we have a couple of teaching faculties. They most focus on teaching. And then for every faculty, they direct a lab. Okay. And then if you look at uh, faculty, then they have uh, focus on different aspects of computer science. Okay. Uh, so, uh, for example, I focus on some aspect of computer science and then another faculty focuses on some other aspect of computer science. So we focus on algorithms to internet of things to robotics to data science to artificial intelligence to visualization to image processing to high performance computing to many uh, broad areas so uh, what is the goal here the goal here is to give the broad spectrum of courses for anyone who wants to pursue computer science at kent state so you will get to work with the faculty in the area of research that you are interested in. so um and then and then there will be opportunity for you to work in lab as well um so initially when you join kent state in masters in computer science we do not expect you to join immediately in research what happens is that you have to be a little bit more exposed to the working environment. What does that research mean? So when you take master's seminar, then you will get a little bit exposed to uh, research. And then when you take some of the courses, then the instructor, which are like me, the faculty, they see the promising student and then, and then they sometimes offer, if you want to work with me, you can join my lab, I will support you. And then that's how it goes. Okay. So what is the future and scope of the courses that are offered by the computer science department? And can you tell us about these new programs that have been introduced and the new program, new faculty within the department, especially? We are evolving. I will say that. Okay. Why we are evolving. So, um, you know, we have a very typical master in computer science degree, right? But that is not enough. You know, if you want to focus on, for example, now computer science is a very broad uh, uh, field. Okay. So if you want to work on bioinformatics, then you might say, oh, if I uh, uh, study visualization or uh, image processing or something, is it useful course for me or, or machine learning? Is it useful for me? Uh, so uh, what, what we are trying to do is that if a student is interested in some aspect of computer science, we want to give somehow tailored um, the courses that will fulfill the requirement, you know? So, so that's why uh, we are trying to introduce this new degree. So one of the degrees, artificial intelligence, because we are talking about deep learning, we are talking about machine learning, we are talking about recommendation systems. So, so artificial intelligence will give you that exposure that fundamental exposure if you want to build your career in artificial intelligence. Similarly, if you want to build your career in data science, then you might need to have knowledge on statistics. You might need to have knowledge on uh, visualization, how you visualize data, how you uh, deal with the data. What if the data is not 100% correct? You might have probabilistic data, or you don't know whether the data is the right data or not, right? So that will expose you to some of the fundamentals that are related to building career in data science. So uh, when we talk about internships and job placements for computer science students, how does the department help in preparing the students for this? And what exactly is the procedure in which companies come over for hiring students for said career opportunities? So we have, um, we have uh, these, these, all the initiatives are university wide initiatives. Okay. So university offers, uh, the, you know, career fairs. So every year, fall and spring. So there will be career fairs in career fairs. There is a career services department within Kent state. They coordinate all these, uh, you know, events. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is that they help the students to even build their CV. Sometimes what happens is that the employer is interested in a student, but their CV is not up to the par. You know, their CV doesn't doesn't uh, you know list all the expertise the student has. 
you know, some somehow uh, they don't know how to build CV that um, catches eye of the employer, you know. So they help building this CV as well. And then they help uh, also on how to prepare for interviews. Uh, they will also connect uh, these employers with the students. And then, so that is a that is university wide initiative. And then, so actually those career fairs were very successful uh, before. Some of the student in computer science, they uh, got connected to employer uh, through career fair and then they eventually landed job, okay, in, in those companies. Within computer science, we have industrial advisory board. So this industrial advisory board, uh, the, what it does is that we have local companies here uh, near Kansas land area in Ohio. So uh, what we do is that we ask representative from those companies to be part of the industrial advisory board. And then what they do is that they connect their requirement with computer science. So what they do is that, oh, we are working on this area. And then if we have some product from computer science that uh, could uh, do something related to this requirement, then we'll be happy to have them, you know? So based on that, what we do is that we connect a student with that expertise to those employers. And also what we do is that depending on the requirement, we change our courses and we change our degree requirement so that we could somehow match the industry need with the graduates that we produce. So how has the computer science department helped the students in this time of the pandemic? There was again university-wide initiative for this one. So what happened is that for international students, they could apply for some kind of a scholarship and then it will be given to them. So that is more of a financial support. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was not big, but um, it was somehow like a, a food stipend kind of thing. You know, if some of them um, are not going to their, uh, not going to do their student worker job or anything, then there will be a problem, right? So um, there was that kind of uh, support. And then also uh, there are different kind of scholarships. They could apply for scholarships. And then if they work in research lab and then as a TA or as a RA, then there will be definitely a financial support. And then in summer, uh, they can work as a student worker. So uh, you have to reach out. Uh, and then I support, for example, I support four or five students in summer as a student worker. So they work with me in research and then I pay them, uh, you know, uh, to, to support. Or in summer, you could go and then do internship in industry. And then at the, when you go there, then they will definitely, uh, you know, pay you. And then there is a dual benefit. If you are in non-thesis mm. option and then you go and then do internship, then you can count that as a credit requirement. And also you are getting paid. So uh, that will help. I can really, really relate to that. And in fact, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sharma, because all these answers that you have just now provided to us, they are so direct and they have, they'll be really very helpful for our interested students who are looking at computer science uh, for their future possibilities in their career. Um, on that note, I would like to tell you viewers that if you have any question about the computer science related programs offered at Kent State University, then we welcome you to send in your query to us at india at the rate kent.edu. We will also be providing uh, Dr. Sharma's email ID. If he, uh, would you be okay with that, sir? Yes. Yeah, so we'd also be providing Dr. Sharma's email ID on the screens. It would be reflecting on your screens right now. And you can address your queries related to the program to us. We'd be more than happy to assist you. You can also follow us on our Facebook and Instagram pages for which the link should be showing on your screens right now. And if you follow these pages, you will always be updated about all sorts of information and factoids about Kent State University, even the state of Ohio itself. We also host live sessions to answer all your doubts and questions. So subscribe to us today. Thank you all for watching this video. This is Hansa from Kent State University India Center wishing you a very good day. Goodbye.